The horse's hooves squelched across the rain-drenched grass and leaf mulch as the farmer set off for Macclesfield. The autumn wind whipped at his face and hands and the milk-white mare beneath him, moaning and groaning and warning of the oncoming storm. The pair trotted through Alderley Edge, where the golden leaves of the high trees provided shelter from the gale. But it was not long before the first rumble of thunder rattled its way across the ridge. Chunky droplets fell fast, causing the white horse to whinny and shake. But the farmer kept his grip firm, encouraging his horse to pick up the pace, hoping to ride out the storm. Farmer and horse clattered on. The rhythm of the mare's hooves held strong through the din of the thunder and rain, until it stopped abruptly and screeched in fear. <laughs> Buckling and whinnying and almost sending its rider flying. Someone was standing in the path ahead of them. He stood oblivious to the rain cascading around him, dressed all in black, his form ominous and foreboding against the grey sky, eyes gleaming with a supernatural fire. His white beard and hair were wispy and easily caught by the wind. Silvery strands floated around him as he raised his hands to the farmer. The farmer clung to his horse, too frightened to proceed, but just as frightened by the potential consequences of turning back. He knew the man who stood before him was not a mere mortal, but a wizard. The wizard began to speak, a rhythmic prophecy that echoed across the edge, far louder than the grumbling thunder. The wizard knew of the farmer's intentions to sell the horse he was riding, but he urged him to sell the mare to him instead, for the horse was meant to be a part of a great destiny. The wizard's words continued to echo long after he had disappeared. It took a while for the farmer to process what had happened, but shaking off his fear, he managed to encourage his horse to trot back onto the path and continue their journey to Macclesfield Fair. The skies had all but cleared when the farmer reached the fair, and his milky horse was admired by all, gleaming far brighter than she had when the pair set off that morning. But despite her beauty, no bids were made, and as the afternoon drew in, and most punters had departed, the farmer's thoughts returned to his encounter in Alderley Edge. If he wanted to sell his horse, he would have to do so to the wizard. Mounting his steed once more, the farmer returned to the edge. And there, in the exact spot he had appeared before, stood the wizard. He gestured for the farmer to follow, and he did. Past Stormy Point and onto Saddle Bowl, where the wizard began his spell. He mumbled his magic words, and they flowed from his mouth and became a part of the wind. His clothes rattled in the gale, eyes burning, glowing, as the earth shook violently and revealed the towering form of the mystical Iron Gates. The wizard waved his hand, a little gesture like swatting a fly, but its invisible force was enough to send the farmer flying backwards, freeing his horse, who trotted on towards the wizard. The farmer pleaded with the wizard not to harm him, the spellcaster chuckled and promised he would not harm the farmer, instead encouraging him to proceed on towards the iron gates, which now guarded the entrance to a giant cave that had certainly not been there moments earlier. Inside the cave stood a line of milk-white steeds, just like the one that now trotted away from its owner, but these horses stood still, as though they were carved from wax or marble. Beside them stood the bodies of several men ready for battle, clad in thick armour, but their eyes remained closed, lost to a deep slumber. The wizard led the farmer into the cave and past the snaking line of sleeping warriors. It was only when they reached the gloomiest part of the cavern that they stopped in front of piles of gold that were stacked up beside an iron-bound chest. The wizard carefully prized the chest open and counted out a sum of gold for the farmer, in exchange for his steed. The farmer accepted the gold, but begged the wizard to explain to him the truth of what he had just seen. The wizard was in a playful mood and happily obliged, telling the farmer that inside the cave were the country's greatest warriors, 
who were destined to lie dormant until the day they were called upon to defend England from its most fearsome foe. That was all the detail the wizard would give the farmer, who then shooed him away and led his former horse into the shadows. The iron gates clattered shut, sending a thunderous rumble across the edge. In the years that followed, the farmer shared his story again and again, but no one who set out to find the mysterious iron gates could ever do so, not even the farmer himself who quietly slipped away one evening to retrace his steps, hoping to confirm that he had not dreamt the entire encounter. But no mortal would ever catch a glimpse of the Iron Gates or the wizard again. Until, of course, that fateful day that is still yet to come, when the troops will emerge from their slumber to defend the land.